up? What's going on, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to the TGC podcast. Before we get into anything, I want to take a second to say rest in peace, Kobe Bryant. He uh, passed away in a plane mm. crash earlier today. Rest in peace, Kobe. He was an icon. Rest in peace, Kobe. Black he was on that plane. plane. I heard yeah. his daughter was on his that daughter plane. Was on he was doing yeah. a lot of great things. Wow. So. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Rest in peace wow. to everybody that died in the past. You know, this holiday season, a lot of losses. Yeah, Influential, so, you know, especially in our personal lives as the collective. It's been a lot of loss. It's like of we talking, yeah, you know. These last couple of years, period. Yeah, man. Rest in peace, yeah. my father, man. Yeah, yeah, man. Rest in peace, rest in peace, yeah. rest in peace. Yeah. Yeah. Compton, yeah. mom, yeah. Yeah. and grandma, yeah. everything, every all the people I'm forgetting. Sorry. So yeah. thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, so this is our very first episode. We've been talking about it for a while. Uh, we've been setting this up for a long time, so we want to just thank everybody for the love and support. So allow us to reintroduce ourselves if you haven't been following us on the Instagram. Uh, so we're going to give uh, introduce ourselves. So going from the right to left, I am Desmond Odom, uh, a.k.a. Uh, North Black Panther, a.k.a. the North Ninja. And um, to my right, it's going to be... I am Malcolm uh, Duvar, you know, the milkman. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, nah, you know. Go ahead, buddy. I'm Q G the King, that's it. Motherfucking funny hot one. You wanna follow me, get it on. You already. It's Big Neff, aka Juan the Great. You know how we do it. Drumming all day. It's your boy Hase Trek, the author of Circle of Pain and many other works to come. And yeah. You already know, drumming collective, man. Keep going. This Vaughn right here, you know, victory over negativity. We out here. Yeah. And today we're just gonna let you guys fill you guys in on how this collective came to be. Uh, the word collective just means a, a, a bunch of talent coming together uh, with one common goal. And us as six black men, we, our goal is to change urban narrative, to uh, get you guys to see a different perspective of what goes on in the city of North, being a little bit more positive, but keeping it you know comedic and fun, and give you guys a little bit of inspiration and motivation. Uh, so today. We're going to talk about how we started off. So this actual podcast started out with these gentlemen, Vaughn and uh, QG and Afis. There was something they were talking about in a while. And um, so they're going to introduce you guys on how we started the idea. And then we're going to talk about how we actually got to meet each other. So Vaughn, how about you lead the way? All right. Like, it's crazy because we were just outside drinking, talking, <laughs> some normal shit, like just macking, like pretty much. What was that like, Saturday? Shit? It was, I believe it was a Saturday. Was Saturday like, we were just chilling, you know, a day off. We all chilling, drinking, enjoying the night. It was nice weather. And they brought it up, uh, QG and Feast. Like, I always thought about it, but they brought it up. As far as, like, yo, just recording as far as, like, uh, shit that we talking about and just, like, our everyday conversations on being black men and the working world or whatever the case may be. So, uh, I'll pass it off to Feast. Like, let him get some input on that. Yeah, for, for me or for us, it was it was kind of like we had just been going through the ideas and countless notebooks, pieces of papers, you know, sessions. Like, we really used to, like, 10 years ago, like, we, we were really, like, just sitting down in the room, like, drawing pictures and coming up with different ideas that we can all use for, like, some type of business that we wanted to build. And like, we were just having one of those moments. We've been going through these moments for years and years. And we were just having one of these moments with Nani. And like, he just said it like, um, we think about this too, what's up? What's Nani, something? that's fine. Like, like if you don't know me by, like, if you ain't grown with me, you don't know me by nah, that, but so we lit. So I came into the fold, like one day I seen that they was down on the block and I didn't grow up with all these guys. Nah, we, we actually told you to oh, come out. I, I called him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he I did. He was, like, he was like, he was like, niggas out here. Like, we talk about the podcast, yo, whatever, was, whatever. I, I just want to say this. From that point, from that point on, that very day, it's been motion ever since. Then. Every right. since, since, yo. Since then. Every since, because everybody always, right. everybody had that idea in their mind. Everybody had stuff they wanted to get out, yeah. if nothing exactly. else. And we all know we speak from a lot of fucking experiences. We did a lot of different things. So when they called me to come out, I was just like, I'm with it, and I do the, the video editing, the picture. So I'm excited for a new project or whatever. And once they they gave me the introspect of what they was trying to do, I was like, yeah. we lit. And uh, the the whole name Grumman Collective come from uh, my nephew Big Neff Juan. He'd been speaking that to existence for such a long time that it, it fit. So since we all came together, we was all we wasn't all born on Grumman, but we all came and congregated here, and our, our bonds as families and brothers started 
on his block or whatnot. So when he came up with the name, it was just like, we flowed with it like, so nephew, let them know a little bit about how you came up with the name, Grumman Collective. Well, I was taking pictures doing my photography and stuff like that. And then I was taking pictures doing my photography and stuff like that. And I saw that my friend, Steve, AKA Jose Trek had a book. My other friend, Loon, you just heard him speaking. He had his clothing line going. That's, an, that's another name. Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, we'll get with Vine. Pick me up in negativity. It, 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 don't, it don't matter shit. Don't let out here, But man. yeah, I just started looking like everybody got something going on. So I'm like, we a collective. So it's the Grumman Collective. And then my uncle made the emblem. You know what I mean? We here now. Take away everything. 100%. Everything, everything. That's it. That's all. Yeah, man. Everything, there's always, always a beginning. And it started, I feel like, years ago. It was just me on the block with the, with our neighbor. Shout out to uh, to Officer Henry. Um, we used to just hang out on the block. And then um, there was a kid named Loquan who um, popped up on the block, came up with all his energy. He just popped up to me, yo, you want to be my friend? And then, then uh, his brother came, which is QG. The man right here, and uh, he brought Quan brought him to everybody's house, and that's how me and him met. We became friends, and we went to Maple. Yeah, this nigga paraded me around the block, man. <laughs> yeah, he brought me. Yeah, he brought me. As he should, but as he should though. Yeah, like you know on the block, yeah. fuck it. Word is born. Yeah. Brought me to everybody yeah. house. Yo, this my brother. Got me out of here talking, talking. So I meet everybody, and then then I'm seeing certain people. In school and shit, mm -hmm. so it was Don't different. You live on the yeah, exactly. Don't you live on Grumman? I never forget the first two people that came to me was Hot, my boy Hot. Shout out to my boy Hot, yeah. my nigga. He Omavi was living G. right here on Kid. Yeah, my little old Mavi. You know what I'm saying? And my nigga, rest in peace, my nigga Adonis Noor, Eric, 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 that that guy. You know what I'm saying? Rest in peace. He came, they both came to me. We was acting, I don't know why we was acting so proper at this age and shit. The niggas was like, you know, what's up? Oh, you know what I mean? Like, how you doing, my do, name is? Yeah, yeah. yeah and, do, and introducing themselves to each other. And them was my first friends. Like, them was my first friends coming to the school. Yeah. But when I was over here, I already got introduced to these guys. I'm talking about within the same hour. Yeah. Like, we you know what I mean? We talk about second, third grade. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I met Feast before. Now Feast ever moved to 18, right across the street from me. I knew her in fucking Maple Annex, her and his sister. And this is the first set of twins that I've ever met before the other famous set of twins that popped up in Maple. We're not going to mention them. Hopefully we get them on the show one day. I know, because they got some stories. But anyway, and uh, all of a sudden, I see a moving van, and this dude pops over. This is, I'm like, yo, don't we? And we in the same class, bro. So we, that's we, we that's how we linked up and then uh y'all fuck around and help me move in. <laughs> now man and whatnot and uh Steve's uh, Loon, Loon, oh Loon. I say this story hey, um, every on, day. Bro. I've been so I met this guy. I've known come Loon on, since he was like we're, two we're years not old. Gonna, <laughs> we're not and gonna do this right now. You know his you know second what, fuck birthday. Like, fuck it. On his second birthday, yo, his brother dressed up as a uh, Barney. Right, and it was a Barbie <laughs> thing birthday party. So I'm sitting on my porch. I, 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 I think I'm like like six, seven, whatever, however old I am. And you just see Lou Vaughn just taking off, hauling ass down the street. You just see Barbie behind him, give me a hug. I love you. And this little fat baby is just zooming down the block, bro. And <laughs> that's a fact. That's a fact. Though. I ain't even gonna style. Fuck it. Uh, yeah, Hell yeah, nigga! I, was, I ain't know what this big purple shit was at the time. Like, <laughs> I'm not I'm not keep it a buck. Think, uh, QG, like, like he said, his brother brought him to the house and introduced us. That's been I knew him since like elementary school, second, third, before I even moved on Grumman. I think everybody else I met while living on Grumman, while just coming outside. Grumman. Like, we yeah. really used to just like. Like Play tag. Like, 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 we just meet. Just like. Come outside as the sun came up Not and bad. just meet up. Everybody just came outside and just. Niggas had a rap room. Like, yeah, like, we had a little game. Do something. Like, Remember our little game, little devils. 
We had a little yeah, devil's we, game. We, little we had a little rap group oh, down there. Oh, so now they raving. Oh, Mr. Red, I was Mr. Red. QG was raving. Oh, now me, my nephew hit to see he had the bars. Did, Yo, bro. so let me tell you about my nephew, this nigga, because he he sitting over there quiet, but this he been in grubbing for as long as I've been in grubbing. Yeah, yeah, I've known this nigga probably any longer than anybody at the table. This nigga was sexy, flexy Floyd. Nigga came to the block and took all the girls. Oh, all the girls, <laughs> Bruh. From from QG House, the three girls that was in there, two of them you was after. Feast cousin you had, and then the girl around the corner that nobody never met except for me and you, yo. Know? The light skinned girl around the corner that lived in the building on kid, never like a, a, a fucking shadow because nobody never met her but us. Had all of them, son. But who did he end up chasing? The one that lived in QG House. That girl was your heart. Oh, man. Man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love took some up, bro. But I'm all fat and like goofy but and remember, shit. I went to I went to I went to school in Hillside with Dominique and all of them too. This oh, is how shit, all the yeah. circle is fully connected. But I, I wouldn't learn that until later on that they were connected. Uh huh. So, uh, Everybody yeah. came together. And whatnot, but at the end of the day, we all I'm trying to challenge him. I'm trying to get the girl. He tried to get the girl, but he the skinny nigga with the big, bright, pretty smile with the white teeth. All the girls. Let this nigga fucking nigga why. But ended up I ended up chasing fucking feast cousin for years. He ended up chasing fucking QG sister for years and shit. But the good thing how times pan out I like trying to fuck with our friends. <laughs> 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 we was trying to be a part of the family. It was a lot of that going yeah. on. Man, 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 it was a girl, it was a girl. It was very respectful. I'm ready to be y'all niggas. It was real respectful though. Real shit. Shit, man. I was about to walk away from the table for a second. Hey yo, but my story, my story is uh Nobody knew where this nigga was. Um I moved to Grum and like I want to say 99 to 2000 was when I moved to Grumman. I'm going to tell you, the bridge for me was Carzea. Carzea bridged me to everybody else. Like, when I first moved to the block, I ain't no shit. I ain't know nothing about the landscape. I just wanted to come outside and to make friends because I came from an apartment building, 165 Augusta Street, right across the street from Irvington Park. That's why I, that's where I was at before Grumman. But Grumman raised me to be a man, and um, I wound up meeting Carzea. The first time I met Big Mike, Shouts to Big Mike, Mike Purefoy, the DJ. He stepped on my foot and shit. And I looked at him, I was like, yo, yo, hey, yo. This shit was hey, stepped on your foot. I'm like, what type of shit is this? Like, nigga, what type of friendship is this? He just stepped on my foot. But then after that, it kind of like panned out, man, because I built a relationship with these guys that's timeless, man. And Jawan came in the picture a little bit later when I was like in my teens. Dez, I was familiar with, but Dez kind of really came in the picture more when Jawan came in the picture, so everything mm-hmm. fused out. Mm-hmm. And QG and Nafis, I used to always see. I knew about Nafis definitely early on in my life. QG, I knew about you because I y'all always was together. No bullshit. When I always yeah. see y'all, niggas, y'all niggas was together yeah. since out two thousands, all that shit. I always see y'all niggas. But yo, when I really start, I really started to really like embody the grammar thing because I seen like. Man, Grumman was beyond just the block. Like everybody kind of knew each other because they parents and grandparents knew each other beyond mm-hmm. a different level. And I used to be like, yo, what the fuck? I'm I used to feel like the outsider because I'm like, yo, these motherfuckers got history. Everybody got history except me. And so then when I kind of got into that world, I was like, yo. Yeah, once I got in, everybody was accepting of me. Yeah. Like doing. That's what happened. Once I got in the world, everybody was like, even when I like up the hill, you got JR. I grew up up the hill, so it's JR, it's Glass. All I knew them. And you know, even I got a funny, like I said, I got a funny story with Glass. Like my first time ever dealing with Glass was a negative instance. But right after that, it was positive. Every time I seen Glass, he was handshakes, hugs, positivity, everything. Rest in peace, Glass. It was always positive. JR, they even when I was playing ball, they know I was playing ball. They always ask me questions and be like, yo, when you got games, yo, keep doing your thing. It was always good words. But when I come down the hill and deal with my people, all y'all, it was like, yo, it was always love, man. Now, one thing I always liked about this block is that QG always say this shit like, yo, it was a safe haven. It was always a safe haven. When you get to this block, it was like, yo, it, it, it was that. 
You know what I mean? It was always family oriented. Yeah, I don't give a fuck if I talk to QG every day. I don't have to talk to him every day, but when I see him, I know it's a mutual respect there. Oh. If I speak to Juan, it's a mutual respect. If I speak to Dez, it's a mutual respect. If I speak to Fee, it's always a respect level that niggas don't cross that boundary. We always stay within that boundary and be like, yo, yo, you good? Your kid's good? You good? You all right? You, yeah, yeah. And if something go down, if, if niggas on Grumman see it, they not just going to watch it. They going to participate. Like, yo, we fuck with you more than we fuck with other niggas because you from the block. Kalindra was one of the toughest motherfuckers yeah. I knew. Look, we don't even love. talk about her. Oh, yeah. Kalindra, even love. when she moved to Hillside, bro, used to that whip that over there and get lit with Kalindra. <laughs> Shout out Kalindra. She was one of the roughest niggas Kalindra, I knew. Feast. Well, she a female, but you know this shit. That's a long time ago. Too. I was trying to start this little project. Me and me Kwan. It was called. It was called City City Dream. And we was basically, we was basically just putting like putting together a lot of history from North and like trying to fuse it with like up to date history and modern like old history and stuff like that. And I, I just hit it up one time because I, I wanted to let me do a little story on her or whatever. Like I was just basically like taking taking pictures of a, a person from North, whether new or old, and just like do a little a couple of paragraphs mm-hmm. on them, like. Mm-hmm. A little info or whatever. So I hit it up before I before I even did it and just asked her like, yo, I want to take one of your pictures off of your Instagram and just do a little story on you. She like, yo, whatever you want, we from Grumman. Like, you feel we, me? We from Grumman. We family. Me? Like if you always, even, if you always. even need something, like just call me. Like we family. Like she like take any picture you want. Like call me if you need me to do anything or whatever. Like, and getting into it that, was love. I want to talk more yeah. about how we grew up and how even though we were separated. We still was able to come back to this collective room. There was like we never missed a fucking beat. We still came back to this like minded list, this family list. To, this is my motherfucking man's. I grew up with them. Unless but we a, always had it. Mm-hmm. We it, always it's had like, it. it never just like we, that, this is why you bugged me out when you was talking about when we was rapping because we was doing that shit back in the day, bro. I'm talking, we, I'm talking about we was doing out. this shit back mm-hmm. in the day, like having two boom boxes next to each other, one recording. One what? Playing, yes, one nigga! Stuff in the fucking tapes with tissue and, and making Look. And making whole songs, though. Yeah, Look. Making whole songs and hooks <laughs> and all that shit, though. Look. At a young guys, hey, remember we Fool if I ain't came up here? Damn, and they was I doing it with the other singing shout out, yeah. 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 But this four five yeah. 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 Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. When, when we was young, they respect. When we was young, that's we had respect to me, I guess. We had the same, we had the same mind frame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had the same mind frame from a from a young age. And they pulled up in the van. They pulled up. We used to, they, was, they looked at me like, oh, with the music shit. shit. Like we, you, we was really like trying to move like a like a business. Yeah, like, yeah. We was, we were trying we to was like together, having right? them come from Elizabeth and like having scheduled time for us to yep. record. And did yep. you work on your song or did you do this? Did you work on your part? Like even like throughout the neighborhood, like it'd be this group over here who record or this group over here rapping. We had different sessions at his house or you work on this beat. We gonna. Like, we, we was moving right at a like, young age. That's why this shit was supposed to happen. Man. Hold on, fellas. One second before we forget, let's make sure we shout out this King QG graduating college. Let's get this man a round of applause. Still doing great. 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 Big shout out to QG, man. Big shout out to QG, man. He he breaking barriers, man. A lot of people ain't see beyond that, man. Mm-hmm. Like, yo, one thing about Grumman, yo, we ambitious as hell, man. I don't give a fuck if we go from up top, from where I was raised to down bottom where I hung out. Everybody ambitious, man. Everybody got goals. Everybody matured. Every- hey, listen. I ain't gonna incriminate nobody, but I know we did what we had to do. We <laughs> you know, yeah. some yeah. We like to say our success rate is ninety nine point nine. I guarantee. And they bitches used to like spending the night over this way. So mm-hmm. yeah. They look at yourself yeah. with the cameras back there. That's what's true. We, we gotta celebrate like us, my boy. Time. Man. We gotta celebrate us because we got it in. I want to actually touch on touch base on how we actually grew to be different. I mean, you realize like as, as we grew, we went to college. We all did different things. Like uh, my nephew, my nephew, so he's always been in my life. But he like cooked up with y'all, with, like Vaughn and Steve. He started kicking it with y'all. 
um, QG and Fee started kicking it, and I kind of went on to do my own different things. So I think we should let the fans in a little bit on those experiences, uh, how we like went to go. Oh, man. You wasn't ready, but you was in for everything. So, no, this I'm, nigga Barnes in the everything. No, 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 Always. This nigga, this shit might be oh, yeah, we might oh, need an uh, episode that go beep, beep, fall. Yeah, I'm like, fucking it. My nigga, this shit that was going got, on. I, I, I'm picking it. I'm trying to get that little button ready. Yeah, we can't say all. I, I, and make sure y'all follow the Grumman Collective right? too. Let's follow the Grumman Collective. Let's talk about you don't got no college experience. Man. Let's talk college about college experience. Oh, and yeah. 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 Totally they got stories. Man, they got stories. That was a movie. That was a movie. Listen, nigga, nigga, look. Oh, I'm gonna say that. Turn is Eric. What was that? Fucking Travis Porter Eric. Oh, yeah. I'm just gonna say that era was different. Oh, this is the Hey, listen. Well, but I ain't gonna say nothing that because me, me and Juan, we used to fucking be on the frat parties over at Rucker's son. That told oh, you, oh, come oh, on, oh, drunk as hell, oh, smoking oh, mouth. Oh, we in there surfing with the ball, fucking niggas. But at nah, the end of the remember day, we went there, we went to the party, went to that party with y'all that time. Remember? I see it. Yeah. No. Nah. nah y'all, nah. y'all had that some other that. shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he had us there, right? Yeah. It was Yo, some other shit. We was. Wow. Yeah, we right. was done that. We was wild. <laughs> huh, bro. We that shit out. Yeah, we ain't yeah. give a fuck. We, we started that shit out. We made bro. an agreement really? like, yo, these people ain't gonna never see us again. We about to act crazy. We say, yo, we about to act crazy over this bitch. Wow. Yeah, we about to get like, stupid in this it's, bitch. It's yeah. All white people, sorry. And we like the only couple black people. Word is fine, yeah. Couple people looking at us crazy. And, but for the most part, they were just like, all right. You know, yo, we started wilding the fuck somewhere. out once we noticed that like, shit. Yo, what? Man, fuck that. <laughs> we here. <laughs> Make sure you follow we, we yo, Nafis we and Kwani Hadi on Instagram. We probably around, around that time. Instagram. My goodness. <laughs> the Grumman <Yeah>. Collective. <laughs> tell the party we all did. Yeah, tell him. They had like these little all stages on the floor. Hey, wow, every door. Stages and everything. Hold up. Hey, well, we yeah. gotta get to that after this nigga. Thank you for taking us there. That Look, night was really I mean, I went off. When I, I went off, I started off. I went to college. I went to. Uh, I started off at uh, Lincoln Tech, and then I went to. I got a scholarship at Rutgers with the beat for a short amount of time, and that yeah. didn't work out too much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I went nigga. to Essex County and whatever. So okay. I got my. De- and I mean, I got my degrees in uh, biology and education um, and whatnot. You so in, in that time, it was like I moved away from Grumman, I wasn't around. So it was like, I kind of became disconnected from everybody. But at the same time, I watched what everybody was going through and I stayed connected with my nephew and whatnot. And he would tell me like, um, what was going on in the block. So I still felt somewhat connected for me. And this nigga, even through that transition, that was my link up partner through this transition. Uh, I always kept uh, connected with Big Neff. And we used to go out to fucking Rutgers and get fucking lit. Nice. Fuck it. I mean, we used to be out there. That's when I was smoking miles and stuff and drinking and heavy and whatnot. And I mean, now ain't nothing wrong with smoking miles. We ain't smoking miles no more. <laughs> but we'd be posted up on the wall just macking. And fucking females just called to us, like, oh, is that a, can I smoke your mouth? Yeah. And after that, we know we going back to the exactly. dorms. Yeah. We going That's back it. to the it's dorms. Totally different. Oh, what is the Okay, bet. And we, we, I mean, we, we put promoted clubs together. I mean, we bounced together in that time or whatever. Uh, we both ended up getting married and in, in, in within that time. And uh, put, uh, we, I mean, nah, I ain't gonna clap it up. <laughs> nah, ain't gonna clap it up I, mean, I got divorced this, this last <laughs> year. <laughs> Ladies, we'll talk about Ladies. that later on. We'll talk about that whole episode. <laughs> we gonna get this relationship talk on in a whole nother episode. episode. Yeah, that's Make sure you stay tuned. Grumman Collective like Podcast. Dez Oda, man. Make sure y'all follow Dez. What's your, what's your Instagram, man? <laughs> Dez973. Dez973 on Instagram. Make sure y'all follow the brother. That's a whole other episode. And, um, hey, so, Juan, so let let us talk a little bit about, like, uh, our time at, like, Ruckus. How we used to shut shit down, bro. Big Neff. Which one, which one was that? Which Ruckus was? Ruckus North. We used to well, run. We, we, had, we, had, we had no Brunswick. Too. We, I got no Brunswick story. Oh, I, 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 I talk about King. I talk about King. Look, we ain't gonna talk about. No, no. Niggas got We're too drunk at yeah. King. My nephew didn't even have his license, bro. Oh no, she can't. Look, we not here. Wait a minute, nigga. He said me too. Oh shit. Look, we not here. Wait a minute, nigga. He said me too. Oh shit. This nigga 
niggas talking crazy. Oh, this you know this was one of the nights when niggas got too drunk. My nephew didn't have his license. I was like, yo, bro. You climbing through windows <laughs> and shit in Union County. Look, doing our fucking numbers <laughs> and shit. I'm driving yeah, with no names. You would have did numbers for that wow. shit. Exactly. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Y'all niggas, niggas crazy. Yeah. <laughs> that the 100 Bacardi, the Bacardi 100, yeah. Yeah. I, when I saw what it did to her and what it turned her into, I realized that that was devil juice. To, to, in real to, life. to never, ever, ever, ever. I'm going to leave it at that. She came in and said, What? Y'all think I'm about to F? Send it to us verbatim. <laughs> that was said, like, that word. Nobody even think about you. You're like, You with the homie. Oh, she with the shit. She with the homie. Now, we don't know the homie be having this. We don't know he on that wild shit. We don't, I don't know that. He's willing to share this motherfucker like she a piece of candy. So, you know what I mean, because that wasn't his girl. That I was didn't know just... this. I'm just sitting there. I'm sparking. What, what was the turn? Jump on that jump off. Yeah, that jump was the jump off. That was the turn back. She, jump she was the jump off. And, um, she come out the room, nothing on. Nothing. I mean, nothing. Not those shoes. Nothing. Nobody was in there with her. Nothing. She nothing. went in there no, by herself, and room. she made a conscious decision. I want to get naked and in I, front of these I'm men. Sitting, I'm the scariest one. I'm the scariest Larry, though. I'm like, yo. And this nigga did the most. Like, I'm face the day. Like, I was like a little bitch. Like, you could tell, like, this, this, ain't, this ain't what he do all the time. <laughs> <laughs> like, that ain't this nigga right here. That ain't him. This nigga too. That's all I know. In my heart. In my heart. You turned it off? No, no, no. Oh, in my heart, I'm like, no. Oh, this about to happen? Oh, oh, oh. It's about to go. And they went. It went. went. Oh, it went. She, it went. She's with all the room. shit. Nigga, we went in the bathroom. She, I'm sitting in. The, I'm in a fucking chair in the tub, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting in the chair in the tub. This bitch is topping me, my nigga. Going in and then she turns to legend. my homie and starts topping him too. And I'm just Are y'all like, legend? Oh, oh, no, body, no, so, no, no, no. body. They so, the, this nigga is on the toilet. The nigga's desk is in the tub and he's passing his. Her head like a volleyball. No, so, don't disrespect to you, woman, but this this particular person does not yeah, represent you very well. Hey, listen. I'm sorry, she does. Yo, this is she this is it. moments she that you had it. to grow and learn, man. Yeah, this is learning. Me and the homie grow. that was going to the school at the time, <laughs> we go back into the front. We start smoking and drinking again, and I realized that my drunk is stupid. Where my nephew at? This nigga dog. So my homie was just like, "Fuck it, he gonna miss the blunt." We left it alone. My nephew came back in and calmly sat down. Ain't say shit to nobody. I looked at him. I was like, was it good? He was like, no, I ain't do nothing till we just talk. <laughs> and I'm looking at him like, for real? real niggas, so my man, real niggas, so, so my homie hit my phone the next day. He was like, yo, you know, I thought the condom in my window sill. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> and it's I ain't well. smash. <laughs> and you said, you ain't smash. And that nigga was gone for like fucking 15 minutes. Yeah, I, I don't know head. what the <laughs> fuck happened. So I left it alone. Yo. yo, like six months later, we just smoking out of nowhere. He just said, yo, uncle, I got to tell you something. You got to let it go. Hey, yo, I smashed it in that room, and I left the condom on the window. So I was like, that's what we already do. We do it, with you. There was nobody else there. And this shit was so real, though. We chilling in the room. It's a knock at the door. Now, he got a bitch across the hall. Bitch, think it sound cupid. Mm-hmm. So then, like maybe twenty minutes later, we had another knock. Once again, white boy coming. This nigga Kaz, oh no, bro. I got the word. The nigga sold sold white boy some white in front. Of, like it was me, the nigga. Way. Nigga, it's oh, we did it. He went right to the kitchen cabinet. He about to get somebody indicted. <laughs> hey, listen. Shit, I Wayne got Richards, this ain't good. real names. We're not mentioning real but names. Why? We li- we mentioning aliases. And shout out to this dude. I can't, I don't want to say his name, but yeah. No, 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 he had had to go for teeth. Shout out to my homie, though. But I mean, I ain't gonna say his name, but he, despite what he did on college to get through college. That man is a scholar. That man is a father right now. That man is a hard worker. But it goes to show you sometimes people go through shit, but motherfuckers can change. You gotta figure the it out. The nigga went to King University and graduated as a scholar, bro. Graduated with a 3.7. So despite God his bless. fucking 
bullshit that he did through, he had to do it because of his circumstance. Oh, but doing that got him through. And now that man is a positive part of his community. Hey, yo, can we take a moment to just shout out all the kids that's not even kids, because you y'all you somewhat adults, man. All the people that's definitely working hard in college. Trade schools, we gonna honor everybody because mm -hmm. trade schools. It's tough in trade school, Further man. But y'all, y'all, y'all in trade schools make it happen too, man. Because plumbing, electrician, automotive, you know, black shit, all, all that stuff, stuff, automotive. That stuff ain't easy, man. It's just as hard as going to four a four year institutions for nursing, communications, or whatever. You know, so we celebrate everybody who doing their schooling, getting their education and knowledge. Definitely, man. The Grumman Collective definitely celebrate y'all, man. Definitely. Uh -huh. definitely. Uh -huh. So branching in, so that that's me and Juan's story. I kept in contact with him, but then he kept in contact with you, folks. Yo, Ron I'm gonna can, 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 can I tell you? Listen, Jawan J. Bradford, man. Yo, man, he became my brother over the years because I realized that we had a lot more in common than we had. That wasn't in common. And I met this dude one day uh, in the Harringtons, man. If you if you familiar yeah, with Grumman Ave, the Harringtons, you know he came back to the backyard. I was shooting around. I, I was mm -hmm. I was a young boy. I was like a junior at that time. Ninety. Big big shout out to Vaughn. Uh, if y'all get a chance, victory over negativity, man. Yeah, that's a Vaughn great back. brand to support, man. Black owned, man. Just small business wise, man. Beyond black owned is a small business that's gonna grow, and um. I met Jawan and I didn't even like this dude when I first met him because I was like, yo, who the hell is this dude? Who is this big nigga that's he coming over guy. here with this crip energy. I don't know what this he's talking about. Do rap. And, nigga, yeah. no, we don't rap. Like, but beyond what? that, I, I grew to love this dude, man, because we realized we had more common than we did that wasn't in common, man. And one of the biggest things that we had in common was hip hop, man. We grew up on the 90s era. He was a big Nas fan. I was AZ fan. And uh, if you know anything about Nas and AZ, you know that yeah. Nas and AZ was brothers, man. They made great music together, even though we never got that solid project. AZ and Nas, I got to make that. They got to make a project for it. But, it's a done deal, bro. I'm but sorry. when I when I got the yeah when I got to learn who Joe, Jay Bradford was, it was a different perspective for me. See, we had a lot of similarities. He dealt with the crack era like how I dealt with it. His was more intense. His journey was way more intense than mine, and I always appreciate talking to him and learning from him. But he also always, we had a lot in common, like I said, due to the music and our circumstances. Uh, I had a lot of infiltration to my family due to drugs and um, crack cocaine and stuff like that. So we built the bond, man, and the bond became Thomas. I remember him coming and, you know, celebrating my graduation from high school, taking me to um, Skate 22. Skate 22 ain't there no more, but he took me to Skate 22 to celebrate my high school graduation, man. And I didn't have a lot of people that celebrated it with me. My uncle, he was fresh out of jail at that point, so he didn't have the means and resources to be able to take me. My mom was working a bunch of jobs just to get us by. So Jawan, Jay Bradford definitely stepped in and made a play for me, man, at that time. And I thought it was special. Um... And then from that point, we kind of grew, man. Me going to college, he always fully supported me. Everything I did, man, even to this point, a circle of pain, man. And big shout out to QG Feast, Dez, and Nani, because everybody at this table supported me when I dropped the book, man. So I knew it was beyond just, yeah. it was beyond just friendship. It was more like, yo, you, what you doing is bigger than what we know, and we're going to support any visions and dreams bigger than what we know. I know Nani, a.k.a. Victory Over Negativity, got a big uh, movement that he got going on with his brand and, so, and basically embody the whole concept of embracing your victories and positivity over negative circumstances. And, and Juan, man, I keep going at him because he got the photography going on and Dez is the ninja warrior. First of all, anybody who, who, who want to step into that realm of being somebody different, a ninja, a wrestler, a boxer, anything you do, when you step into that realm, you are doing something that most won't do. And I, I, I send my love and I big ups to Dez, you know, everybody at this table right now, because Dez did something that most people in Nook not doing. You know, I'm in, I'm in the whole right there, yo. Last year, this when I knew that book was gonna be a thing and be a success. When we was down in Atlanta, we was going out there, we was drinking, we was having fun. I swear to God, despite the fact what everything was going on. This young man, Hansi, said, I'm going to sit here 
in this room while y'all niggas getting turned. I'm gonna type this motherfucking book. And he was dedicating hours every day on his vacation to type in this book. And that's why I was like, this is a nigga I could be behind. And this is a nigga I know I want to fucking follow and see him succeed because he has the drive that I try to put in my students every single fucking day. And even off that, him saying that, like, it's crazy because me and Steve, well, me and Hase Track, we had a, a conversation a couple of years ago. I want to say, what was that, 2018? It's a minute ago, like, bro. Like, 2017, <laughs> something like that. And I, I was thinking about starting my uh, closing my victory over negativity, and he was thinking about starting a book. Like, he brought it all to us, like, yo, what about writing a book together? I know for a fact, like, that wasn't, like, I wasn't going for it, like, <laughs> so... It's just like that's him. So it's like so I bet, bro. Down, that's a that. fact. He, he definitely did. He house. gave he Anybody it was a full break breakdown down of how to go about uh-huh. it. But me personally, knowing me, like nah, that like I'm not gonna approach it that way because that's not me. I went with the clothing line, victory over negativity and it I'm works. pushing that. Like it, it, it it's more than just a clothing line. It's a lifestyle, like lifestyle. shit. It's, it's it's no living. Wow. It's no losing, I'm sorry. It's no losing. Like, you can't lose. It's, you got to put the victory over the ne- uh the negativity. And There's too much negativity out here. Shit, it, much. It, it's so much of it, bro. <laughs> every time I do bro, a show, every you gotta have it up. everything I wear is my shit Getting right now. Me. Like Every convention me? I've done, Tosho it's on my phone, like, everything, bro. That because that mindset is a mindset of like, it's, it's, it's a lifestyle. Ninja, you understand? It's a lifestyle. It's, it's, it's more than just a. A clothing brand Keith, or whatever the case may be. And like, Keith, you, you you actually started since we all collabed together and we came together to start birthing ideas, man. You actually you jumped into your own lane. Like, hey, QG too. Y'all jumped into, into your own lane, man. man. So talk about what y'all do. Stuff. What y'all plan to do with y'all brand? What y'all got going on with y'all brands too, man? How y'all came to? We got a lot of years. shit cooking up. Yeah. And this been Black shit we've been cooking up for more than ten years, more than fifteen years. We had the idea to do the shit since back in the day, but we just never actually did the shit. Now we got the means to do the shit, so you already know what time it is, man. Because up in New College, soon, man. These, these two, like we said, we kind of, everybody, you know, you grow up just because you branch off from people don't mean you dislike each other. Right. We always had love, so even though we clicked up differently, I mean, we all got our own stories, but these men are outstanding black fathers, like... This guy feast pulled Incredible. up in my dream car, Black Camaro, nigga. I was fucking hating. Like, I was like, <laughs> how, son? How, bro? And at the time, this was just when Yo, I was just. You don't even know we talked about this yeah. back in the day. <laughs> like, he <laughs> said he won a fucking <laughs> Batman car. I'll tell y'all though. He's, I swear to God. Yo, I swear hey, to God. Please tell us the like story, please. Years ago, yo. This shit is I like. I swear to God, he said he won a like, Batman car. Everything that's happening in my life right now. Manifest. This, this is all like talked about. This is all no, like this is all like dreams. This is like everything I'm he living right now. He said he black rims on it. All, uh, all, mm. all, all everything is going he said on. Said he went black right tips on it. Literally, what's like, on it? Literally, yeah, it's, it's and it's all the just like and it's the car play, he play, said play, he wanted to Batman work, like. with. <laughs> That's it, sir. That everything is it, the, the, from the the, the clothing We're line, online. everything like clothing line the, NRD. That's what it's called NRD. I mean, putting shit together with my friends, all that. Like, we've been trying to do this for, for years. Like, and You ain't try. You it did it. It just came like, when you it. needed I'm to do it. I'm living it. a this dream, is the We done seen the ideas we years, had seven, eight years ago yo, coming out shit, now. Shit, I've seen shit that and was like, we done drew. And we should have capitalized off back then. Would have been popping now. It's popping now. Hey, QG, that's a good fucking point, man. Feast and QG. Yo, there's a lot of stuff. Like, when I think about the book, when Nani talked about, I talked about this years ago. And sometimes exactly. sometimes you got to understand that with your journey, sometimes it don't include your friends till later on. And I realized that I wanted to include my friends on my journey when I had to put my own book out and do the work first for them to see how I was really wanting to birth my ideas. Yeah. So sometimes, like, hey, with the NRD, Nardi Wear, you gonna have to do all the groundwork and go through the pain so that next time that we all can rock your shirts and then we understand your vision. With QG, when you put out your brand and do what you do, it may take just you to go through the pain. You might be like, damn, they don't understand, but it's okay that they don't understand because it's meant for you. Just like with the photography for uh, Big Neff, 
you know, Jay Bradford, I always be in his ass because I'll be like, yo, bro, you got to frame that work. Yeah. What's the point of having that work if you ain't framing? I got to do that now. Like, I know you got to do it. The, the cutting machine. Yo, bro. I, I got one too. Big that nephew visuals. Things like that. Check we that guy one, out. We can make frames and shit like that. His Boy, pictures bro. of Jersey City Honestly. is a perspective I Honestly. swear you will never see. Yeah. Check that man out. He He's very Patriotism. humble. He don't talk about it too much. But look at his Instagram. And he does it humbly. He ain't out here looking for no kind of recognition. He just likes the journey of taking pictures. Like, tell him about how you came to be. And, like, the, even the equipment you use is not even, like, top tier shit. But if you look at his stuff, it looks like it is. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Thanks to Samsung, you know. Bought what kind Apple. of phone you name? How, how because you start? Because out here, we going to make sure that we get a brand on it. Um, he using a, a Samsung phone. And Samsung, how at my guy. He's like, the pictures he's taking is, like, you need to be endorsing this guy. At least giving him free phones. Like, fact, that's a fact. Yeah, hey, Samsung, hit my I'm man up, bro. Give, give him the best camera you got. Yeah, you know, but um, um, I had started taking pictures with Vaughn right. about I say uh that was what, October, October of twenty eighteen. Yeah, we started taking uh photos and video. We went to Hoboken with the Frank Sinatra Park first. That's a fact. Yeah, it, was a, it was the day was so sunny and so bright. It was a beautiful, it was a beautiful, it was a beautiful fucking day. day. Oh my! It was kind of cold out that bitch though. It was kind of cold. It won. I'm gonna go bad. All right, but um, we went there. We went to Weehawken, and that's where like that's like on the Hudson Yards, Empire State Building side of the waterfront. Now where I work at, 99 Hudson, the tallest building in New Jersey, opening later this year. Say that. Is more, it's right on the same line as if you're looking at the Freedom Towers, directly across from the Freedom Tower. You could get on a boat for $7 and be in New York in about four minutes. Try it one day. Take your girl, take your kids, do that. And um, I just was out there one morning, I just started taking pictures, and every day I would do it. Because sometimes I would find myself getting mad at work, like, what, what am I here for? Like, I don't got no purpose. And then I'll look at the waterfront. And then I would just walk down. Then I would see the per- the people with the fancy cars, and I would just walk up to them like, "Hey, my name's Juwan, whatever. I work at ninety nine. Can I take a picture of your car?" Then it would just everything started rolling. People would know my name. Hey, hey, big guy. You know, you big, you black. That's hey, big guy. That's, you know, and it just went from there. Every day, you know, I go see the ducks, the homies. I call the ducks the homies. Uh, you know, bro. I want <clears throat> yeah, I want y'all to listen to Vaughn a little bit. He could tell about how. The photography journey for him is connected with mine. It's crazy because, like, we started photography at around the same time and shit. Like, we went out. We're just I'm just like, I had a camera after I broke my leg or whatever. I was in the house for a couple I had to months. Beg this <laughs> for, like, <laughs> well, I got to be all like, hey, I did. I mean, not the F word, but I know we, it is what it is. <laughs> good, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, fuck it. Like, we out here. Like, shit, we started doing photography photography around the same time or whatever the case may be and it was just on some shit like yo you off work i'm off work fuck it let's take this ride man we're going to take some pictures fuck it we started taking pictures and shit and it's crazy because one of the well, one of the days we went out just so happened to be like my bro i say track like that's like i took a picture with it's crazy because i had my camera with me and I took a picture with my phone just to see how the how it would come out, and it ended up being my bro, uh, like picture for his book and shit. So like that's super dope on my part. Like it's crazy because shit, yo the picture that that's on my man's book shit, like shit, the cover and everything, shit. like it's the picture that's I took hard. with my phone, like. I told my I it, it, it's, it's crazy because it, it's like it's just so that, surreal because it's like yo, I literally took this with my phone. I, I had my camera with me, yo, what, and I'm what just park like, it, but what park is that? Is that was that the Wernicke Park? That that, I think that was the North uh, Bergen Park. That was Bergen Park. Uh, when the sun, the, when the sun with yep. the guy. with the uh, yeah. yeah, I thought it was crazy. Like it's crazy. Great, like, it's crazy. It like, wasn't. I was I was going through pictures. I had found one picture. And for my book, I'm like, yo. I knew they was taking pictures. I'm like, Nani, yo, I give you ten dollars for your best three pictures. He sent me three pictures. It was one with flowers. It was one with like uh, um the park overview with the fountain coming out the center. And I was like, yo, I love that fountain coming out the center. I was like, yo, I'm gonna use that one. He sent me one a Wheatway Park too. He sent me three of his best ones. I was like, yo, I need this one. 
And for that artwork, yo, big ups to um Victory Over Negativity, man, because that photography was major in my Honestly, book, that, man. Honestly, it's, it's a blessing, and, like, not even just on my part, just that I happened to be there at that time to get the photo that I got and for we got, him to use it. We got to the part at like, the right time. It, yep. Exactly. Yep. Like, he just made it. It was, it was just oh, super that perfect too. at that time. It was yeah, we, hoodies can, and all. Like, can I tell you something? Just walking around taking pictures. I paid, like, I paid Jay Bradford two for three photos, man. And because I, I wanted to use his photos too. He had a lot. They both had a lot of good photos. So I was like, fuck it. They part of the team. I'm going to pay them for their work. And um, I bought three photos from Jay Bradford too. I didn't get to use them yet. But one of them I'm going to use probably on a later works because I, I always hold my pictures that they give me because I know they're going to be greater than what they even visualize it for. I got more fire. Yeah. yeah. And Jay Bradford and both of them, they got, they got a lot of good color, artwork, bro. man. Y'all got to pay attention. Definitely, uh, if you get a chance, Jay Bradford Photography, man, he got he get all the morning shots and the late afternoon shots that you want to see. Um, Victory over negativity. He get a lot of abstract shots, man. The shots that you be like, damn, yo. I got animals, boats, boats on, you know. Y'all got some it. good shots, we man. Went to, we went to Verona Park. I we, got that it's a, it's a lot of pictures that wasn't put out that. there yet. And, and, I got the squirrels and this is a lot of work. This nigga chased a fucking deer. Yeah, I got the video well, technically, the deer. no. That was the buck this nigga yeah. chased. That shit would have been beating his ass in the bushes, but. I know. Uh, right that was West I know yeah. for a fact that I'm gonna be losing a lot of money, but I'd rather invest it in my brothers, man. Definitely. And that that's how we that's how we build the black community. High say track, yo, and I respect you for doing that. That's starting small. But if if we all have the mindset to invest in each other, then that's how we build each other up from the ground up. But, um, this is this was amazing getting this conversation out. This was a great first episode. So you guys got an inside look on what the Grumman Collective is. You got us as fashion moguls. You got us as photographers, authors, teachers, uh, fitness buff. So this is the channel you definitely want to be following in 2020, the year of clear vision. We established this way back in 2019. I've been calling it up since 2015. So make sure that you are, you follow us all. We about to drop our social media. So make sure you follow us individually. Also follow us as a collective on the Grumman Collective on um, Instagram as well as Facebook and YouTube as well. Uh, my name is Desmond Odom. You can also follow me on Des973 on Instagram. Desmond Des Odom on Facebook. And then uh, you can also follow Fees on uh, Instagram. And we say N R D. How do you spell N R D? N R D I. The I is the subscribe. Nice. Yeah, you know it's funny hot one, bro. Funny hot one. I used to go on, bro. Oh, on Facebook, whatever you want to do about it. It's your boy Big Neff. You can uh, check my YouTube channel, Big Neff Visuals, and you can follow me at J Bradford Photos on Instagram. This your God, man. Hase Trek, man, the author, man. Memoir. Uh, we dropping another project next month. Stay tuned. But you can find me at Hase Trek on Snapchat, IG, Twitter, whatever social media you want. I'm definitely on it. Good reads. We we definitely popping off the good reads, man. I gotta clean that up a lot more. And on to V O N, man. You know, it's your boy Vaughn. You can follow me at Vaughn973, V-O-N 973, and uh, Victory Over Negativity uh, brand at Instagram, you know. So, peace out. How are y'all, man? So make sure you stay in touch with us. We will be dropping these episodes every week, same time, every oh, week. So right. make sure you guys are tuned oh, in. Oh, you right. Because oh, you right. don't want to make sure y'all miss out on this because oh, the story right. coming up is going to be lit. We got the Valentine's Day special. We got a Father's Day special plan. We got a Mother's Day special plan. We going we gonna be out there in the city, California, Atlanta, Miami. So make sure you hear because we're coming at you from all across America, all yeah, points of views, and we bring you that heat that you're not gonna get from anywhere else from a North based podcast. So thank you for tuning in. This is the Grumman Collective, and we out. We, we out. out. We out. We out.